Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reba Nance, and I'm the Director of Law Practice Management and Risk Management for the Colorado Bar Association. And it's my pleasure to welcome you today to our presentation on LinkedIn. Frankie Cervantes is our presenter, and we're very fortunate to have her. She's the founder of Frankly Communications, a public relations and communications firm. She's a former TV journalist, but you can still catch her on national and or international broadcast networks reporting on breaking news events. Um, her experience in communication spans more than 17 years. She creates and conducts social media and digital PR, PR training workshops. She's a skilled and experienced public speaker, successful event planner with media and professional organizations. She's an experienced writer, producer, and editor for broadcast television. She's knowledgeable about SEO, advanced social media skills, and knows the tools necessary to strategically create, implement, and execute a marketing and public relations program for private and or public companies. So welcome, Frankie. We're excited to have you present with us today. Thanks for your time and expertise. Well, thank you for asking me to present today. Um, so today we're going to talk about how to boost your network with LinkedIn. And I'll be taking calls um, pretty much, or not calls, but questions. If you have a question, feel free to ask them at any time, but I'm going to leave some space toward the end. Uh, LinkedIn actually was one of the first social media networks. It currently has over 277 million members worldwide. And when it launched in 2003, um, it did want to, you know, they created the, the platform to just be your online resume. And to this day, it is still the only social media network that is all business platform. Um, it became more popular in 2007, uh, but it is the original social media network. So if you ever get that, that question in trivia, it's LinkedIn, not Facebook or MySpace. So your LinkedIn profile helps you establish your professional profile. Again, it's your online resume. It's also great for SEO, and I noticed that you had um, taken a course on SEO. And if you're wanting to boost your company or your name specifically, LinkedIn marries well with Google, Google search. So you want to maintain your LinkedIn profile. You want to keep it up to date. Um, it helps you keep a broader network of professionals. And there's one thing you might get, you know, requests from somebody that you don't really know. My advice is unless you know them or they're linked to one of your contacts, don't accept it. Um, I would ask your, you know, your colleague or your friends if, you, if they know that person and if you can trust them because there are still people out there um, trying to spam using LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is a great way to learn about other companies, organizations, and associations. It's a powerful tool um, in regards to wanting to reach the people that you need. You can tap into the knowledge of your network by joining different groups and creating a group yourself and discovering new opportunities. So building, I'm going to start from square one of building your LinkedIn profile. You always want to add a professional photo and make sure that your headline mirrors what you want your keywords to be. So if you are with the Colorado Bar Association, make sure that you put your title there and where your location is. Your keywords are you know, how you want to be discovered online. And if you see there, you are more likely, seven times more likely to be found on LinkedIn with a photo. So if somebody's searching for you by name and um, they're not necessarily going to find you, they don't know that you're in Denver, if you're if, you know, it's a former colleague from a different state. Your contact information is relevant. Uh, you want to add any Twitter accounts or your professional website, or if you created a personal website, add that information into your contact. The most important thing that I emphasize is creating a custom URL. 
And I can go through this when I'm done on how to actually create that because a lot of people do not have a custom URL. So in your contact information, you'll notice it will say LinkedIn.com and it will say in and it says your last name, but if you have a bunch of numbers after that, that means that you don't have a custom URL. And what's important for that is, again, for search. You can easily be found online. Keywords are important. Keywords are important when you're adding a summary, um, and that has to deal with you know, your industry. How do you want to be found? Uh, speak directly to your audience when you're writing the summary. And adding media components. So I have um, posted a couple of my SlideShare uh, documents there. Um, you want to add any type of photos or images with awards or a certification articles that you've written. Um, it will all help enhance your, your profile. One of the things that uh, you want to network, of course, using LinkedIn, and again, these are all uh, colleagues or professional contacts that you want to have in your, in your business database. The way that, that you add folks is on top of the toolbar of LinkedIn, it will say network. You can add your contacts by syncing your email. You can find them directly by name. You can find them based on it, your, your school. Uh, you can also find them using groups. So um, if you're attached to a group that you're following, you can find people uh, using that as well. You want to include your current and past roles. And again, I'm going to emphasize using keywords because LinkedIn, again, is married with Google. So any keywords that you use is going to get higher ranked with Google. Link the company LinkedIn business page. So if you are working with a, currently working with a company that is on LinkedIn, be sure to uh, select the correct company. Oh, recommendations spelled incorrectly. <laughs> Ask coworkers to submit recommendations and, and two most recent submissions will appear to the next corresponding role. So have colleagues or former colleagues or current coworkers add recommendations to your profile because that will get higher ranked when people are looking for you in the news feed. I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to show you how everything that I just covered works. Having endorsements, um, when you see that appear on your profile, if you want to endorse somebody, I recommend doing that because they'll do the same for you. Um, endorsements are a great another way for recommendations. And all groups that you uh, join will also appear on your LinkedIn profile. So when you're selecting the groups, be sure that it's uh, mirroring your business and what you want to be related to in your industry. You can only have 50 group accounts onto your, into your uh, profile. And when you're selecting your groups, you know, be proactive and, and, and talk to those people um, that are that have the same interest. You can start a conversation with them by start, um, sending a message or having an open forum comment. Um, one of the best LinkedIn uh, practices is to keep your activity up to date. Keep things fresh with with adding news content, industry news, even sharing somebody else's information. It's based for a conversation, not like a billboard like on, on Facebook. Um, the, the information that you post on there should be business related. It's quick and easy um, to read and 
always attach a link if it's attached to an article. So the best practices is that you update your profile. You want to add a headshot, customize your URL if that's not the first thing that you do. You want to find interest groups. Monitor the news feed. If you are looking for a position, looking for specific people, any type of updates, I would monitor it at least once, once a day or once every other day. Ask for recommendations and endorse current and past colleagues. Um, and don't sync LinkedIn with any other social networks. Um, it's not best practice because each network should be used as a different platform because the conversation is different. Um, and you might see, like on Facebook, you might see people sharing their Twitter feed or likewise with LinkedIn. It's just not best pra practice because you just never know if it's you know, something personal that you're putting out there that you don't want all of your business contacts to know. So before I get started with showing you how to use LinkedIn, uh, any questions so far? You know, Frankie, I've got a quick one. When you say don't sync with any other social networks, um, I'm assuming then that there is a way, for instance, if you changed your Facebook page, you could say go ahead and share that with LinkedIn and sync with LinkedIn and that's what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I would not sync Facebook or Twitter or no other networks with LinkedIn because, again, that's your professional resume. And the way that I've always described Facebook and Twitter is Facebook is like happy hour. You're going to share more things with your friends and family than you would at lunch, and that's what I consider Twitter. Conversation that you would have at lunch. Um, and LinkedIn is what you would talk to HR about. <laughs> okay. Makes sense. No other questions? So if you have not yet updated your URL, this is how you would do this. You would click on Edit Profile. And then you want to click on edit here and then create your unique URL. Typically, um, I would use your first and last name. If you have a common first and last name, put your middle initial. Frankie, that's not a problem for you. Do you mind maximizing your screen? That'd be great. Is that better? Uh, I don't see any difference here, but, you know. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. So it, that's, a, that's better. That's good. Thanks. Is it, is it better? Yeah, that's better. OK. So with LinkedIn, this is your, your home page. And you, and you do want to pay attention on how many times your page is being viewed in, in the past few days. Um, if you don't have the LinkedIn premium account, you can click on this and then it will tell you briefly if you want to see more. If you're in the market of getting a new job or you really want to use LinkedIn as um, a sales tool, then I recommend using the, the premium account. Otherwise, um, the non-paid account is just fine. So in your news feed, you can say like or congratulations. If you like it, it will appear in other news feeds. So I would be careful on what you are liking. Um, you, know, you can say congratulations. It will appear in the news feed. It's not where you can pick and choose um, what's going to appear. However, you can change your settings. You 
can turn it on and off your activity broadcast. So if you're a manager to a business page or you don't want the likes and congratulations to appear on your profile, then you can turn it off or on. Don't ever use this one. You can select who can see your activity feed. Um, that, they keep it really basic to just your connections, everyone, my network, or only myself. And can you, can you show us an example of what an activity feed looks like, what yours looks like? Well, I have mine turned off. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, but if I, let me see if I can. I'm not sure if, if you know, you've used uh, LinkedIn, um, how often you are, but it, if you've changed your, you know, make a recommendation or you follow certain companies, it will show up in the news feed. And I, I don't want to share with anybody who I'm really following and who I'm paying attention to today. Some people don't care, but I, I like to keep it off. And the things that I share are going to be, uh, you know, relevant. Um, I don't think this information is relevant to others. Mm -hmm. do, do you know if that's, if it's set to share by default? It is. Okay, so then folks who don't, folks on this broadcast who don't want to share that, then need to go in there and turn that off. Correct. Okay. And I would go through, and I would highly recommend going through the privacy controls. Um, because, I don't know, if it's, if, you know, I don't care if somebody sees my um, information publicly, if my, you know, my, my photo, you know, I, I, I want people to recognize me if they know me and they can add me as a contact. If okay, I log we, in, oh, we, go ahead. Yeah, we've, we've got a quick question here. Assuming that you have multiple job position listings, can you rearrange them, the order, like move them up and down, for instance? It's not Java to where it's, you know, can easily do that. What I recommend doing is adding, um, a, you know, your specific year that you joined or month. Because um, right now I have multiple roles um, with my firm. And so I just have um, the year. Okay. Would anybody on this call be posting a job? Um, it's it's possible. It's possible. Okay, posting a job on LinkedIn is a great tool to get visibility for your firm or your organization. It's $195 per listing, uh, but the visibility that you do get with adding a, a job on LinkedIn may be worth it if you, if you want to do a really specific search for someone. There are a couple of things. I, I am a public person, but I'm also very private. Um, there are some things I want people to know if I'm not connected with you. And some, if I'm not connected with you, there's very few things that I want to share. Um, so you can pick and choose what you want to have on your public profile. I have found a lot of people don't go in your settings and they just have everything visible. So there's no purpose of you having a private or a public profile. I would um, go through and customize your public profile and what you want to be seen and not to be seen by, by others.
And also in this section here, you can create on what you want it to appear on the public profile settings. So for instance, I have, if I don't want anybody to really find me, there's a lot of Frankie C's out there. I can just change it to Frankie C. Your professional headline, um, you want to keep it in, in line with keywords. So my keyword is actually my name. Any other questions? There are a few ways that you can add um, to actually maximize your engagement on LinkedIn. The two ways that I find are best are finding other companies that are interested to you as well as groups. If you create a group, it's a great way to stay in connected with um, people that are within the industry. You can share um, events, topics, news, and interest. It's really easy to create a group, and you want to share that information with your with your network. So you can see you can set up your groups and how often that you want to receive information from them. Because if you have your you know, personal email attached to your LinkedIn account, you'll get notified daily if somebody's posted to it. If you don't want to be notified, then you can change it. So I'm going to click on one of these and, and show you how the group works. So groups, you have your discussion board. You can have post jobs. You can see all the different members, and you can do a specific search within the group. The discussion board is where you would want to share any type of articles. Your search, which I find interesting is that you can break it down by all polls, discussions that I've joined, things that I've started, um, pending submissions. The manager of this group um, has to manage what is being mentioned on this particular group. If I don't find the group to be relevant, I can just simply click on the top right hand corner and leave the group. information and settings, it will tell me who's the owner, the group profile, the group rules, and how many members it has. And under the settings, I can belong to you know, up to 50 different groups, but if I don't want this displayed on my profile, I can uncheck this. I can get notifications, allow the group manager to send me an email. There's some groups that I don't allow this to. Um, it's only because I don't want to be contacted. I just want to see what the discussion is. So this is a great way to you know, control the emails that you receive from the groups that you join. Send me a daily digest of, of all activity in this group. Um, this happens um, at least once a week for some of the groups that I've joined. I don't want to be notified. I can log into LinkedIn and, and look at the group information, but that's you know your, your personal preference. Any questions on how groups work? The other one is to join and look at companies. Um, companies are these are specific companies that you want to follow. You want to find out what they're saying, what kind of news and information they have out there. Most of the time, if you're managing business pages, they're only going to share business-related topics. Because there are some companies out there that send out press releases and it's 
not relevant, but most companies will only post items that are worthy to share. So you can select here where, which are the companies that I'm following. And if I don't want to follow them any longer, I can just simply click unfollow. Can I ask the question is if anybody is, um, owns a business page on the call? I'm looking to see if there's any chat and it doesn't look like there is. Okay. If you want to create a company page, you would click on interests, companies, and then create a, a, create a company page. Now, this is a great way to um, promote your products and services, um, and it's attached to um, if somebody were to um, join your organization, they have the opportunity to select that. So I can show you how quickly, frankly, communication looks. It allows me to post information in here, um, any job postings. If I don't want to pay the 195, I can at least put it in here and that so others can see it in their news feed. But this allows you, this is basically like a Facebook company page, but you definitely want to stay and um, only add relevant business content. There's a lot to cover with LinkedIn, um, and it looks like we're getting close to our time. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Do I have any other questions or anything I can help with? Um, I, I know that there may be some folks who would like to have a copy of your slides. Would you be willing to send those out to folks? Sure. Okay. That would be great. So they can email you then? Yes, they can and, email me, not a problem. Okay, and what is your email? It's fcervantes at franklycommunications.com. Okay, thanks. If you do get, and let, and let me, before we jump off the line, if you do get a request from somebody, I always look at their profile and see who they're connected with first before I accept them. For me, I don't want to have people emailing me that I don't know or trying to sell me something on LinkedIn. You can see what the connections that this person has and who they viewed and how I'm connected to this person. Well, I thank you all for taking the time to um, sit in with me on, on LinkedIn. And if you have any questions or if you want me to share the slide, I'm happy to uh, talk with you. Or if you any other specific questions, happy to answer them. Thank you, Frank. Frankie. We're really excited to have had you. And we appreciate your uh, willingness to share your expertise. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.